welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we're gonna to be looking at Brilliance AI inside of Photo Raw 2024, how you can use it, things that you wanna look at when you're modifying your own photos. Now, if you haven't already, you wanna get a copy of Photo Raw 2024 and save a little bit of money, you can use my coupon code, which is FreeWillPhotos20. It is an affiliate coupon. I make a small commission, but you get to save some money. So here we are inside of On One Photo Raw 2024, and I haven't done anything to this particular image. It's just a photo of a Corvette that was driving down the street, and I snapped a photo of it. So let's go ahead and get to editing. And like I said, in today's uh, video, we're going to be working through Brilliance AI. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the little blue button here to turn on Brilliance AI. It thinks itself through, and this is what it comes out with. Now, I'm not entirely a fan of what Brilliance AI did here. So this is why you got to learn to fine tune what's happening. I think it honestly just made the photo way too bright. So let's see what's happening under the hood, so to speak. The first slider here is going to be the amount slider. And this is kind of how much of the algorithm of Bruins AI do we want to push into this image? Now, this amount slider is actually controlling two primary areas. The first one is the tone amount, which is down here under tone and color. And then the second one is the color amount, which is also under tone and color, but it's under the color options. All right. So if I come back to Brilliance AI, and if I pull down on tone, let me just show you what's happening here. All of these things are considered to be modifying the tone of my image. Now, right now I'm at 0.45, so almost uh, half a stop of exposure um, added to the overall image. If I come to Brilliance AI and I pull this down, we'll just pull it down somewhere close to 50, 51 will do. And then if I come back to tone and color, you can see I'm now at 0.23. So don't worry so much about the math here. Just know that when you pull these sliders, it's actually manipulating the items that are down here under tone and color. Uh, if the slider says tone amount or color amount. Now, for whatever reason, this one didn't actually pick up on any color. And that's just how you know, brilliant AI works, things, things happen like that. But the point here is if you want to modify, like think of the amount slider as the opacity for these two options. If I pull this all the way down, I don't have any of the brilliance AI, uh, tone and color information pushing into the image. And then if I pull this all the way up, I essentially double whatever is happening because if I bring this back down to a hundred, which is the 50% mark on the slider, then I'm at the, the base value. And we'll talk about how to modify the base values here in a second. So that's the fine tune portion. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't leave questions down in the comment section, and I'll either make another video to kind of clarify that because I'm going to keep content coming about this, but I just wanted to kind of show you that aspect of it. So then we have the local adjustments and local adjustments are, in my opinion, a critical step to understanding how to make modifications to your overall image. This particular uh, photo, it only found Flora. Now, if I click on this little uh, option box here that says regions, you can see there's actually a few more things, right? Because transport should be a primary thing, but on one doesn't want to make all the decisions for you. And this is where I think the balance of AI and human interaction really do kind of uh, play well with one another. You get to make the choices of what is going to be impacted in your image. So if I hover over transport, you can see it's selecting all the vehicles almost in this image. But what if I only wanted around this particular image? I'm going to click transport and hit apply. On one's going to think for a second, and then it's going to give me this modification. And what it's doing is it's brightening all of the transports. Well, what if that isn't the thing that I want to have happen in this overall photo? If I click on the arrow next to transport, it brings me to my local adjustments tab and then the Bruins AI for the transport by letter O. You can see 
what mask is happening here. Now, I'm going to actually change this to the red overlay. So I'm just going to go down to the bottom pane here, click this little chevron, and then select red overlay. So now if I hit the letter B to get my brush tool, I am going to paint out all of these other vehicles. And the way that I do that is I can select erase up here at the top, or I can select paint. I'm going to select erase because I want to remove them. And then I'm just going to paint right over all of these vehicles that are in here. Wherever the red overlay is on my image, that means the information is not going to show through on that mask. So those are the areas of the mask that will not receive any of the modifications that I just added. However, what I need to do is hit paint and then make my brush size a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna paint in this area right here. And for whatever reason, it does not want to paint this area in. And that's interesting. This is pre-release software. Sometimes things don't work the way that you would expect them to. And I'm not sure why it's giving me such a hard time here. This is just pre-release software. And sometimes things don't work the way that you really expect them to. I need to clean up the mask. And you know what? I know why it's actually giving me that such a hard time. All right. <laughs> so if you run into this, this is how you should look to fix it. Go verify under global settings where your feather amount is. So if I pull my feather back, Look at that. There's all my paint marks. Uh, there was a lot of feathering applied by default. So I just need to pull this back probably somewhere around there. And then I can clean this up and I can see that that's going to fix the, um, the overall look for this mask because I had the feather up way too high and that was just by default. So now you can see when I paint, it actually makes those adjustments a lot faster. And I'm also painting with a brush at 100% feather. So this is why I do these live and I don't cut out the mistakes like this because uh, I am almost confident that many of you will experience the same thing. We'll just clean up this little back half of the vehicle here. And I'm not going to make this overly perfect because I don't want to make this video too much longer than what it really needs to be for you to understand Brilliance AI. Because now we're really just getting into the overall editing aspect of using photo raw, which I will make more videos down the line dedicated to that. So now that I have my mask cleaned up, I can pull this opacity down or up, but let's say that I didn't really want to make this particular vehicle brighter. Maybe I actually wanted to make it darker. Well, I can just pull down on the exposure here uh, and then maybe pull down on the blacks and I have that. Or maybe I want the opposite of this. And then I'll just click on the invert option in my masking pane and probably pull down on a little bit further. And because this is a drastic change, I'll pull the feather down even more and probably push the opacity just a bit. Now, if we hold down the backslash key, I get the before and the after. You can see that this particular image looks pretty good uh, as is. That's getting to the local adjustments, but there's more to talk about for Brilliance AI. Local adjustments, that's that. Now we have this options section. It may be hidden for you, so just click the word options. It'll open up. That's also a power tip that if you run into anything that is collapsed and you're like, Chris, I don't see the thing that you're looking at. Click on the word or somewhere in the uh, the area where that word exists, and it probably is just hidden, so you just got to unhide it. Now, there are two AI models. I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew what each of these were doing. You don't really need to know what they're doing. All you really need to know is which one do I prefer? And by hovering over them, you can just, you can see what's happening. Now, Anyone who's been watching content on this channel knows that I'm a huge fan of darker, more contrasty images. That's just what I do personally. So I'm going to go with that second option and everything works out just fine. Then we have white balance. I'm not going to get into that. If you're familiar with white balance and anything else, that's exactly what this is. You just choose what which white balance you would prefer and then on one will work that out. 
What I will get into is the no noise AI. Right now it's set to auto, but I do have my threshold set in settings, which we'll go take a look at now. So to get there, you can go to preferences on a Mac that's going to be command and comma as a keyboard shortcut. It opens up your preferences. You'll come all the way over to the far right side, and then this is going to get you to your brilliance AI settings. And as you can see, I left my options, which these correspond with the options over here on the right hand side. I left the white balance default set to ash shot. And then I set the apply no noise AI to raw photos above 1600. So this won't apply to any photo that doesn't have 1600 set as the ISO. I'll show you that in action here in a second. Uh, and then I have the apply portrait AI to prominent faces turned off. You could turn it on if you are using portrait AI. I personally, you know what, I'm going to turn it on. So that way we can look at how that's going to work because that's worthwhile. Then you have your customized brilliance AI. By default, I have the amount set to 100, which is the default for uh, on one photo raw when you get it. But if you find that there's a particular model or that brilliance AI, you prefer it to be less uh, opaque, I guess is the word, um, or if you want it to be more transparent, then you can pull down on the slider. Or if you want more, then you can pull up on the slider. And this is the default amount over here. As soon as you trigger brilliance AI, it's going to default to 176. All right. Now I'm right now still trying to figure out where I like brilliance AI, leaving it at a hundred gives me that center point. And I'm going to test this over a few images to figure that out. But all of these other sliders, they are uh, representative to the tone that you have in the rest of in the tone and color section. So if you know that you like to push your midtones a little bit higher, then you're going to tell Bruins AI, I want you to push my midtones a little bit higher. I would love to have seen a uh, shadow and a highlight option here as well. So that way I'm really giving information to Bruins AI. Maybe that'll come in future updates right here. You can make some modifications and, you know, tell Bruins AI, Hey, I actually like photos to be a little bit more vibrant, which I tend to push up on the vibrancy. So please do that for me. And I also like contrasty images. So here's some contrast, please add some contrast for me. Everything else I'll leave as is, and it'll just work out. I'll hit okay. And that's going to be good to go. If I click on method, you can see I have AI auto and AI match. These are the exact same AI auto and AI match that were on or in the previous versions of on one. So if that's something you're still interested in using, then you have the ability to do that. Also, if you don't want local adjustments, you can turn them off and you can turn them on. It's completely up to you. That's not an option inside of the brilliance AI options that we were just looking at. I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark here. That's going to save the photo, take me back to browse. It does. It goes that quick. So there's a quick glance at Brilliance AI with a little bit more refinement and information about how to use the tool. Hopefully you found some value in this video. If you did, smash the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you want to save some money picking up on one photo raw 2024, consider using my coupon code freewillphotos20 to save some money at checkout. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.